how do you feel about the littlest of kids being forced to wear masks when they return to school? It, it's nutty. Well, it is really tough, but isn't it great to see kids back in the classroom? And I have to say, Paul, I'm so delighted with the freedoms which are being offered to New South Wales residents, unlike what is happening in Victoria, where we are still lagging behind. And frankly, if it was not for Josh Frydenberg uh, calling out the Premier on Saturday morning in a very strong editorial saying, uh, give us back our freedoms, uh, we might still be in curfew. We might still be in lockdown. So uh, it's it's really, really tough, but I'll tell you what, it's even worse in Victoria. Now, let's talk about the uh, joint that you used to work for, the ABC, uh, Channel mm. 2 and their uh, complaints process. Well, they have now finally announced that they are going to review the very process that we've talked about many, many times before. Um, what hope do you have that this results in any different outcomes? Well, Paul, what I think is very positive is that this has been led by the chair, Ita Buttrose, and this follows a succession of uh, deeply flawed decisions um, being made by the ABC. Even the situation where the executive producer of Four Corners uh, was investigating uh, one of their own reporters, Louise Milligan, in relation to a, to a personal social media post. I mean, that was absolutely farcical uh, when, of course, the division that looks after complaints said, well, we don't have the jurisdiction. Well, that's just an ex another example of the absolutely hopelessly broken social media code. So I do think that uh, Ida Butt-Rose has really uh, grabbed this issue and has determined that this is not good enough. It is deeply flawed. And I will say, when I joined the ABC back in the late 80s, would you believe, Paul, wow. there were complaints back then about, its, uh, about the whole complaints process. But something very, very serious needs to change. Well, I mean, I know they, they don't like being reminded of this, but it is part of the public service. If this was about the tax office, if this was about the, the DVA, if this was about, you know, there's, there's all reasons why these things need to be kept in train, but they like to pretend, you know, we're some sort of magical other thing, but guaranteed funding, government super yeah. levels, all the rest of it. And I think that's why uh, you may have seen the Auditor-General's report that's come oh, out yes. about the uh, Louise Milligan payout uh, he has found that there was no policy or procedure which supported that payment. And, of course, this is taxpayers' money. And this is an extraordinary, uh, of course, um, report that's being uh, released today. And I've been very, very critical of this payment, over $150,000 to the personal benefit of Louise Milligan under circumstances when she breached the social media code. And at the time, of course, the ABC said there were extreme circumstances in relation to why this payment was made. Not available to any other program. It looks like very cosy treatment being afforded to Four Corners. And now the ABC has been caught out. And Paul, I will say this. I think this is such a serious issue where one employee has been afforded with this incredible financial benefit. I actually think that there could be a question mark over the future of the managing director, David Anderson. I think it has become so serious. So do you think that if he doesn't reverse the decision, then he should lose that position? Well, I think there are very serious question marks over David Anderson's man management of this whole matter. Of course, he gave evidence and estimates saying the ABC did not bear any editorial or legal responsibility for the personal social media posts of ABC journalists. Well, that's just fundamentally untrue. So he has misled the Senate, in my view, uh, because clearly the ABC has taken legal responsibility for Louise Milligan's bill. But more than that, uh, they've just got this completely broken social media code. They should basically say to their journalists, look, we don't mind if you post about your family, if you post about incidental matters, but if you're posting news or information, you must comply with our editorial policies. And Paul, if the ABC did this, that would also protect journalists because if journalists were going about their job and they made an error in good faith, and they were essentially reporting for the ABC, then they would be protected by the ABC. But what we have found uh, with this whole management of this, uh, of this issue is an absolute schmozzle. But I do think perhaps uh, David Anderson has got a lot to answer on this issue. We will see him before estimates next week. 
and i do think there is a very, very black cloud over his head.